Today is January 19th, and this is the meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee. And could everybody present please state their name? Elise. Aaron. Ruth. And Marty, you can say your presence. Marty Smith. Okay, and Myra Ross. So we have five of the seven members present. And we have a new member, Marty Smith. So you might want to introduce yourself. Okay, I'm Marty Smith. Um, I've been an architect at the university for over 30 years. I've practiced in the Valley. My One of my specialties is uh, accessibility. Cool, well, Timely, today we have something <laughs> that we're trying to send to the Architectural Access Board. So pretty cool. Does anyone have any announcements before we- Well, we start? also have to recognize Pat is here. Oh, joining she Joining our meeting. Thank you, Pat. Yeah, thank you for, I'm glad- Oh, great. I didn't know you were there. Great, thank you. This is great. Pat DeAngelis is our liaison to the town council because she's so on the town council. Quiet during these things. <laughs> Representing district three. two. 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 Cool. Okay. Yay. All right. Um, so, does anyone have any announcements to make? I have a couple updates to give everyone, but I, I can wait until um, after we discuss the uh, AAAB. Okay. Um, just one thing I want to say months ago, a few of us applied to attend a disability conference from MCAD, I think. Um, I'm not sure, actually, one of those agencies. They canceled it at the last minute. They sent a subsequent email that said, we're still gonna have it. Um, that was a long time ago. I think the original meeting was scheduled for October and they have not come through yet, at least as far as I know, with another date. Um, I think Elise, you had signed up for it. I don't know if you have the same. I was signed up for it too. And you were signed up too. I yeah, and I up. was as well. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, so so it's true that they haven't gotten back to us recently, right? Nope, they right. haven't. Okay, good. <laughs> Not good for them, but good at least I know what's going on. All right. Um, maybe we should move on to the letter to the Architectural Access Board. What happened last month if anybody wasn't here, <clears throat> was we had presentation from UMass Architects. Um, hope this doesn't hit home, Marty. But anyway, we had a presentation. They wanted us to give our opinion, which is not binding, um, regarding a staircase uh, and a, 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 a handrail on a staircase that they had um, built already in the UMass Student Union um, in what seems to be a very, very lovely renovation. And I guess close to the end, they figured out that one, that putting in handrails the way they had originally maybe not thought about it very well, um, wasn't gonna work because of the way that they set up one of the sides to be a place for people to congregate. And because the staircase wasn't all that wide, so they couldn't put it in the middle. And so they came to us to ask for our blessing, essentially not to, to, to only put in one handrail on the staircase. And we had a heated discussion. Um, two of us voted that we did not think that was a good, good idea, even though the rest of the committee, four people voted that it was fine. So we voted four to two to approve the request. Again, not that we have any power, but um, after the vote, one of the inspectors, I don't even know who he is the inspector for. For the state, he's a, a state inspector for uh, MAAB, I believe. Okay, well anyway, I made a pretty impassioned speech in opposition to approving this and he said that he was also extremely concerned and that he wished that it had been caught earlier in the process. He understands as a person who is getting on in age that not having a handrail is a potential problem for some people. And he said that we should write a letter to the MAB, MAAB because they are considering 
changing the rule to allow that as a matter of right instead of special permission, because that's what's in the ADA. And uh, he encouraged us to write a letter because he was very upset about what he in fact had allowed. Um, and so I wrote a letter and I sent it to Maureen and that's what you have before you to see if you think that this committee should send it. So that's where we are. If you wanna add anything, please do anybody. Um, I'm, I have to recuse myself from this, but I'd like to talk about the process a little bit. Okay. You actually do have a lot of power. Um, I've been involved in a lot of these. I've gone to the MAAB many, many times and they take your comments extraordinarily seriously. And I, the person that you were talking to is David Holmes, who is the state building inspector at the university. And yes. okay. he is very, he's a very good inspector. I'm sure he actually felt very badly about not about missing this. He did. This is a common feature that we're seeing in many buildings today. And I agree, it's terribly dangerous. Um, we've got one at the recreation center. But I just want you to know that that typically the board won't support a variance if the local board doesn't support it. So you really do have a lot of power. Uh, Maureen, did we act on our, did you send that? I mean, it was Christmas and everything. Did you send that in? Well, you know, I think part of the conversation um, that needs to be had with MMAB um, is that the day before that this committee reviewed this application, the MAAB held their hearing and made their decision. So about this variance request. So it wasn't until the day after the MMAB made their decision um, about this. So in essence, this committee did not have to and did not have- uh, Wait, in essence, you disappeared. Oh, sorry. What did you so, say? Um, unfortunately, the sequence of this variance request, and I, I have seen this with other variance requests, is that the, MM, the MAAB heard this variance request in Boston, virtually, I'm sure, um, the day before this committee had their meeting. So we had our meeting on December 15th, on December 14th, the MAAB held their public hearing. Um, and so that adds another layer of frustration, I think that this committee should share, uh, is that, that the MAAB should not be making their decision until they have had an opportunity to hear from a local committee. Um, we did hold this meeting as soon as possible um, within uh, two weeks of receiving that application. And um, so, you know, it'd be one thing if we didn't hold a meeting for a couple months um, and uh, we, we missed our opportunity or you guys missed your opportunity, but that wasn't the, the case here. Um, uh, we, held, uh, uh, the, uh, we held the meeting within a few weeks of receiving that application. And I, I, I must admit, I, I have seen this um, on occasion uh, with various, uh, with other variance requests. And it, it's not out of not holding the meeting or scheduling the meeting in time. Um, it's uh, that the MA, perhaps the MAAB should be revising their, their time schedule. For holding this so do we have to write another letter? Perhaps, or you could add that into your memo. Well, it's sort of a different topic. Sure, yeah, it could be, yep. But if they had already decided to allow it, I mean, this committee voted to approve it, not unanimously, but if we had known maybe that we really had any power over it, I don't know, maybe people would have voted differently. Some people said they already did it, so what difference does it make? 
Um, and they already had done it. And unfortunately for this specific- well, the, uh, the other thing, Myra, is the reason I approved it because it wasn't the only way to get to the upper floor or down from the floor. And they had directions for alternative ways. So to me, I said, if they can make that visible enough, I don't know, I mean, for people with visual impairments, you know, like you can know about there's another entrance, don't use this one, you know, then I thought, and it is after the fact that everything was built and everything and the width of the stairway couldn't be widened after that, it was too late. So that's the reason I approve that. I understand fully the, uh, the challenges it's going to in, impose on people with visual impairments. Well, not only visual impairments, it's gonna be a problem for anyone, for anyone who feels like they need a handrail or anybody going up and down in the same place. I mean, there, there's gonna be an accident. There is, there's gonna be an accident because there's one handrail it's seven feet wide it's going to have a lot of people going up and down right Myra, whether, I, whether you're visually impaired or not it's going to happen also for people with mobility problems um or elderly people yep. without mobility problems but who need the stability of a handrail i think even if the date has passed we should still be on record with our concerns okay well the committee voted yes so um, you know, we, we're on record as far as we can be with the letter that I wrote. Um, I don't know if anybody has any additions or deletions or comments about the letter, but if we, you know, I think you're right that we should send it, um, but it apparently is, you know, a little bit late. Not that it could have been on time, even if we'd sent it the same day, it wouldn't have mattered. So, so um, what do people think? Uh, does anyone have any, does anyone, how do people feel with, uh, on Ruth's idea that we should send it anyway? Well, this is Tori and I remember accepting it, but with stipulations that they would, um, well, first of all, that they had a different avenue of travel for people who could not walk up those stairs with or without a railing. And the other stipulation I had was I asked them if they would put up accessible signage so that people with visual um, disabilities would know that there's another route of travel other than using the stairs. And they, they agreed with me. I remember that they agreed with that and they were willing to do what they could to put the signage up, so. There is no such thing as accessible signage for me. Okay, well, that's what was said that day, so. Anyway, I don't, I don't can't see, change it. I don't see any issues with sending the letter and letting the AAB know how we feel about it. Okay. Anybody else have an opinion about sending the letter? I mean, does anyone have any comments on the letter that might need changing or any, you know, deletions? Anything? Very good, Myra. I think you really put it down very nicely. Yeah, Maureen I, added well the chapter written. and verse. I didn't have the chapter and verse. She had all the regulation numbers and everything, but the rest of it I did. Um, and um, so we, you know, how do um, anybody else have any suggestions about deletions or additions to the letter? You know, I wonder if UMass should be made aware of this letter and uh, how this committee recommends that this does not happen in the future designs and it never gets into this stage because they came with this and the, and the architect said that there is no way they can make it any wider. Well, now they can't. No, yeah. Yeah, it was it was an unfortunate architectural decision that was not stopped by the inspector. Um, and uh, I guess that's one issue. And if you know if people are happy with the letter, we can send it, even though it makes no difference at this point. However, 
The much larger issue for me is their process that Maureen just talked about. Because if they are holding hearings before official town boards make recommendations on those requests, that's completely wrong. I don't know if it's illegal. I don't know what it is, but it's not okay. And I don't know who schedules their meetings, but they ought not to be allowed to do that. I don't know where they get their permission to be, you know, for autonomy from. I don't know what, you know, what regulations they have that govern, uh, you know, when people have to make application and stuff, but there are repli- there are always regulations like that. Do you know anything about that, Marty? Um, yeah, I was just going to look it up. Um, it'll take me a minute. Sure. Uh. Maureen, do you remember any other instances in which um, the, do you remember specific instances in which it happened that they made their decision before the committee even could meet about a request? It's often. Yeah. I'm sorry, what did you say? It's often, it's if not all. Often. Especially with COVID. Um, and I think it's because that they can hold their meetings in a much more um, timely, timely and efficient manner than uh, before where, you know, the applicant would physically go to Boston for these meetings. So now you, you know, uh, you can have a meeting, a, a drop of a hat. Um, and so I just, um, that's my sort of, my gut feeling of is what, what may be happening. Um, and that, um, I'm sure there are regulations on this and I can certainly look into it if uh, Marty um, is not able to find it in the next few minutes. And um, I can certainly uh, contact the, uh, the whomever has the jurisdiction on this um, and remind them of the regulations and um, you know, what, what's actually happening of, of, of you know, the application that, that this committee receives is damp. Stamped, um, and, and the hearing is with the M. Um, with the You're M breaking up again. Oh, sorry. I, I can certainly look into this um, and find out what is the, what are the regulations regarding this um, because you know with uh, if there is a process, um, it should be respected. Yeah, there is a process. Um, I just looked up, I can't, there's no timeline on their website. Um, I would suggest, I don't know who the new uh, director of MAAB is. Tom Hopkins passed away a couple of years ago. And after COVID, I haven't been in contact with them. Um, but it would seem that contacting the, uh, the whoever the director is or his <laughs> assistant, and I've forgotten what his assistant's name is. Um, I can look it up and get it to you, Maureen. Sure. But you should have a conversation with them about um, about the process and and making sure that we have the ability to review prior to um, their enacting um, a variance application because it's specifically. Copies of the variance application are required to go to go to the building inspector, mm -hmm. the local independent living um, community, and this board. What do you mean by local independent living? Uh, Stavros. We oh, okay. when we do it, it it you have to send or deliver it. The, app, the full application to each of those parties, either by certified mail or personally. We don't get it uh, by certified mail. We just get it by regular mail. You're supposed to get it certified. 
Um, I'll, I'll certainly look into this and, and provide everyone um, an update about this at the next meeting. Yeah. Thank you, Mari. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally don't think they should be allowed to do this at all. I mean, what's the point of a process if you're not going to follow it? Sure. Well, it should and, have a schedule. Yeah. They should say, you know, two weeks or three weeks within receipt of the application, they'll hear it. And that would give this board two weeks, which might mean that you're going to have to have more um, meetings or at least special call meetings. How do people feel about that? idea if there's a variance to be heard then that's part of our responsibility and we should be doing it i agree before they make a decision <laughs> yeah okay so do you think we should put anything in writing or do you think that having maureen make a phone call is sufficient well, why, why don't I make a phone call, find out what they have to say, then I will tell you all, uh, you know, give you guys a, an update on that the next meeting. And then perhaps based on what I tell you, you know, either the issue has been resolved or perhaps a follow up email from from this committee uh, would would make sense. Yeah, I think besides talking to them there. There needs to be some uh, some kind of follow up, either through an email or some kind of uh, memo that's sent to them. I mean, some of it may be that they they just aren't thinking about the fact that they need to offer an opportunity before they vote on something to give you know committees like ours an opportunity to give input. That's sort of their job. Well, yeah, it is, but they need to be reminded. <laughs> Um, I, I, I guess I'd like to make a request if it seems reasonable to everybody. Maureen, when you speak to them, could you please not wait until the next meeting to let us know what happened in that telephone call? But if there is something you need to tell us, just send us a, an email that said, I had a phone call. They're terribly sorry. These are the regulations they will follow in the future. Or I had a meeting. I'm not pleased we need to write a letter because I'd like to send the letter next time. I, I don't want to wait until March to do that. Sure. Yeah, that, that, that makes complete sense. So what I'm going to do um, to be fully transparent is I'm going to do a little digging myself and try to find the regulations uh, specifically uh, under you know Massachusetts state law and go to the website, see what the website has to say uh, through the MAB and then speak to a, a human being to hear what they have to say. Um, and then I'll, I'll report back to you guys, you know, if, if at the next meeting, if not sooner by email. Um, we of course can't be emailing back and forth, but I can certainly email you all as a committee, the information, if you feel as individuals, um, and I'm looking, I'm looking at Myra as the chair. <laughs> Myra, based on my email, if you want to go ahead and draft the uh, memo to the MAAB, um, then we can review that at the next meeting. Does that make well, sense? It sounds like the committee, at least some people have said that they think we should send a letter. So um, yeah, I that, that disturbs me. Anyway, I'll get over it for the moment. Um, okay, so uh, this letter that is um, about their regulation, we should send, right? Um, because we're requesting that they not change the regulations in Massachusetts, which so it's not relevant to the decision that was made because this board did a vote did vote to approve it. So we're not going to fight the decision this board did vote to approve it, but we want them not to change the rules to be less um, to be less strict. Sure. No, but we also we also want them to have enough of a time frame so that groups like ours can give them input into what is being asked before. Oh yeah, but it's a it. different topic. I don't want to mix the topics in the different letters. Okay. This one is just about this particular regulation and how they were 
uh, according to the building inspector, they were considering okay. changing it to lessen, um, you know, to, to make it less uh, strict, to make it not have to, that, that they could have one handrail on a staircase by right, instead of having to come for a request. And- Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't realize that's what you were talking about. Yeah, that's what this letter is. I have a question on the whole thing. The reason they said that they cannot put handrails on both sides of the stairway because the stairway is narrow. Now, how did that stairway became narrow? Did they ask for variance before the handrails that, sorry, we have only this much room and we cannot make the stairway any wider than that? Or is it an acceptable, uh, acceptable thing to have uh, stairways as narrow as six feet or five feet or eight feet, or is it up in the air? What they said was they couldn't put the second handrail on because of the way they put that stadium seating on the side for people to congregate. That if there was a rail there, people wouldn't be able to get up onto the uh, you know, that it would Im interfere with the mo mo movement of traffic that they wanted to do it. And I asked why they didn't put it in the middle so that right. they could have that. And they said, under, they said when they couldn't put it in the middle because it was only seven feet wide and three and a half feet wasn't wide enough for them. And then we talked about, they, I said, it should be nine feet wide instead of seven. And they said, yes, indeed, the other staircases that, that are the ones that Tori talked about, the accessible staircases are nine feet wide. This one they didn't do. I think their original intent was not to split it in the middle, but to put a rail on the side until they figured out that it was going to interfere with the traffic pattern for people who could walk around there. I mean, that was my understanding of it. Yes. And, and I just put this in, in, in uh, what it seemed was the, the real elephant in the room about this specific case, that it seemed that the applicant, UMass, had already bought materials. If not, they were, are, they, they had already purchased some materials and it seemed that they perhaps had already started construction. And I that, thought it was completely built. It might have been, but so what should be happening is that a variance request should be requested uh, before any work is started. Uh, perhaps even materials have been purchased. And it seemed that a lot of people failed um, on the applicant side uh, on this. and. Um, and um, that's how uh, I, I think how this all sort of broke down, um, and it, which is unfortunate. You know, after the this committee did make their motion to make the positive recommendation with those specific suggestions, you know, there was a dialogue between the the applicant and David Holmes uh, about how this was, you know, an unfortunate situation. And that they, um, this is a learning lesson, and and it, that they would uh, anticipate that the, this would that that a variance request would not be submitted uh, at the last minute, um, and that should be um, you know scheduled out in a, a much more timely manner. Okay, so. Uh, we need a motion about whether to send this letter, which is not about their timeliness at all. It's about the change in the regulations that they are considering. And Marty, um, I don't know that you need to recuse about that because that's not relevant to a decision this committee made. Sure. I, I mean, I think it's you. You know, you have a. It's just about regulations. Mm-hmm. Move that does we anyone... send that letter. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. 
Okay, we should, um, is there any further discussion about the letter specifically? Okay, do people wanna vote? Um, we, we need a roll call so people just, Mar um, uh, Maureen, do you wanna call it? You wanna just have people sign sure. uh, I'll, 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 uh, Saren, yes, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Tori? Yes. Ruth? Yes. Elise? Yes. Myra? Yes. Okay, so that was six zero yes. And uh, just other one other point I wanted to just to clarify. So the MAAB uh, does have a draft regulations um, that have been in draft form for the last few years to say the <laughs> least. Um, and um, I think David Holmes, out of abundance of caution, you know, suggested that this committee write the memo to the MMMB, MAAB about the handrailing section. I did take a look at the draft regulations. It does not cover handrailings as, as of right now, and they're not proposing to change the regulations uh, regarding continuous handrails on both sides. Uh, but he did suggest it, and um, that's what you guys just approved to send to the MAAB um, to reinstill that it is important to you um, that that uh, there should be hand railings on both sides of, of a staircase. Okay, all right. Um, and Maureen, you're gonna let us know after you've had that phone conversation with them about their uh, process. I mean, I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's not reasonable for us to ask you to do this, and I won't ask you to do this. But if you happen to find, figure out or remember any things that that were that were uh, acted acted upon by them prior to even a request coming to us, that would be good to know. Because it, it if we had specifics, you know, if this were the first time, okay, maybe whatever. But if they've been doing this a lot. They can't do that. They just can't do it. Sure. Okay, um, North Amherst Library. I don't know what that's about. Yeah, so I just wanted to give you guys. Uh, I, 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 so you know, my um, one of my roles. Sorry, I'm just moving my screen around. Um, one of my roles here is is to give you uh, updates about town projects or have other staff members come in. And, and give you guys updates about um, upcoming town projects, um, either new building or renovations of buildings or, or uh, for parks or parking lots, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the town is um, renovating the North Library. Uh, it's located at, on Montague Road. Um, they're, at, they're also um, building an addition to the library and um, it does exceed the 30% of the um, of the value, cash value of the, of the building. And so they're required to make the, the entire building ADA compliant, meaning that they have to meet all AAAB regulations. And um, they are proposing to do that. Um, so the addition will be fully ADA compliant. Um, they're adding a uh, elevator lift um, the hallways leading from the new addition to the uh, existing building will be all ADA compliant. The bathrooms will be ADA compliant. Um, they will have a new entrance to, um, they'll, they'll be adding a new entrance uh, to the back of the building. Um, there is existing entrance that faces uh, the, um, the, I guess that would be the southerly side of the of of the of the um, building. Um, so the new entrance will be ADA compliant. They'll also have a. Um, they'll be adding parking spaces. There'll be a few of them that will be ADA compliant, um, with you know all ADA walkways and entrances uh, leading into the building. Um, it's still just a very uh, beginning skits. Uh, I saw a very uh, draft form of the plan a few weeks ago in a, a planning department meeting. And um, as this application becomes uh, more and more real, we'll of course have the uh, 
the architect come to a meeting to uh, walk you through the, the design and um, hear any uh, comments or feedback that you have for them as they, um, I believe they'll need to go through the planning board uh, review process uh, for a site plan review. But I just wanted to give you a, a heads up uh, about th those plans. Didn't they come to us once for something to do with their proposals for that? Um, I don't Anybody recall. Do you remember that? I don't remember what they came asking for, but they I don't did. know if it was um, that. It wasn't for the North Library. It was Sh Sharon Sherry, the library director, came to a, a DAAC meeting last year regarding the Jones Library. No, it wasn't uh, that. that. Does anybody remember what I'm talking about? With North Amherst Library? No, I'm not, no. I didn't I, think North Amherst. Yeah. Okay. I don't think we saw the designs, but there was probably some discussion about it. Yeah, I think there was, but I don't, we have to check back. I don't. I remember, I remember there it. being a discussion about a building and I believe it was a library, but it wasn't going to be able to be uh, made accessible. The building was to it was like a, a landmark or something and I don't remember the existing that. building oh yeah they couldn't change the front isn't right. it the one with all the colors i thought it was a munson library maybe not no it, it's is, right at the intersection the, with them um, north amherst library have a lot of different colors on i don't think so but it's at the no. intersection where one road goes to montague and the other one goes to, I can't remember now. Uh, it's it's at that split okay, in the, in the mill that. district. I'm right, not well, sure if the building I'm thinking of was a library or not, but they came to us and they um, said that they weren't gonna be able to make changes to make it accessible. And to the existing maybe to building. the existing well, Maybe it was without the, the renovation one. project, Tori. What? Maybe it was before they got the renovation project planned. So, maybe. Yeah, maybe they right. said they couldn't because make the existing we, building. Because we were thinking of the libraries being made accessible. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that was the reason. Yeah. All right. Maybe. Well, if nobody remembers anything specific, we'll wait to hear. But now we have, now we're on alert. <laughs> At least I feel like we're on alert. Um, also, we should have to also have a discussion. Wait, I'm sorry, two people talking at once. I don't hear. Sorry. What, uh, uh, I don't Pat, know who it was, Sarah and Ruth? Ruth. Pat, didn't we also have a discussion before we disbanded town meeting at the town meeting about this? I wasn't there for that. I don't know. Does anybody remember that? I don't remember that in town meeting, but I can try and find out. Okay. All right. Um, what I was going to say, Myra, is I hope they give us enough time to look at the designs. Exactly. I think that's what I meant by now we're all on notice um, that things can get done outside of what we think the processes should be. If people just do it, you know, you know, the new thing is to say you're sorry instead of ask for permission. So we yeah. have to watch for that. It's yep, a new right. way of doing things. Yep. Um, Okay, so Maureen, on South Pleasant Street, 35 South Pleasant Street came to us with variants a million years ago, not even, um, and the, the, to because they had to put a ramp to go into the Chamber of Commerce building and they had to pass it by Austin Jeweler or, and, and it was, there was no good way to do it. Did, did, did that, what happened with that? Uh, so um, they did put in the temporary ramp as we're all aware of last year. Right. Um, I believe that ramp is no longer there. Uh, I have not heard um, about any future plans. I, well, well, let me back up. So they put in the temporary ramp last year while they were 
work actively working with a architect with Kuhn Riddle of designing a, a permanent ramp uh, that would require a variance request. Uh, they came to this committee last year and presented you the design uh, even uh, before they were going to present, uh, sit, formally submit it to the AAB. Um, you, uh, this committee provided recommendations. Uh, I believe they were positive recommendations. I would have to go through my meeting minutes. Um, and then unfortunately, a month or two later, COVID took over the world. Oh, so pre COVID, okay. It was only okay. by months. Um, okay, okay. I think they just, you know, their attention elsewhere. I can certainly reach out to um, the bid um, to see if using that on that very cost. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, what? What? Uh, oh, yeah. The next one is about the report. Yeah. Um, um, so the good old report. So I. Um, it has been reviewed by staff, and so um, I'll back up. So the town updated its self evaluation and transition plan. Um, which evaluates all our town facilities, such as buildings, parks, parking lots, trails for ADA compliancy. So we had consultants over the summer physically come here to town. They did their audit. Uh, we had surveys. We had, uh, we had the consultants come to a DAAC uh, meeting um, where they gave a presentation about the project. And, um, uh, and, and took comment and feedback by committee members. Um, there was a survey that was sent around to town staff, to individuals uh, with disabilities in particular, but to all individuals and to organizations that focus, uh, uh, that uh, assist with uh, persons with disabilities. But again, to any organization. Um, and, um, and the consultants reviewed uh, policies and programs. So the, the plan takes a look at all those sorts of items and they came up, they uh, finalized the plan and it's been reviewed by staff. So I will, I would, I'm planning to give this committee a presentation about the whole project. Um, and I would like to hold that next meeting if possible. Okay. And we'd include the findings of what, what they found. Um, it is, um, so there is an accessibility report for each facility. Um, they did a very thorough job. Um, so I won't be able to go through every nook and cranny for each facility. I might do a sort of a I might just focus on one facility to show you a sort of sample or maybe uh, show you little bits and pieces from different facilities. Um, these uh, accessibility reports uh, on average are about 100 pages each for each facility. So, um, and those get into um, their, their specific findings for each um, non-compliant item that they find inside and outside. Um, it was limited to places that are open to the public. Um, so they weren't going into areas that are for just staff. So for instance, they didn't go into basements that we, you know, in some, in some of our buildings, we have areas that are for storage where we have file file cabinets and stuff like that. Uh, we don't have volunteers or, or members of the public that go into spaces like that. It was limited to areas that are open to the public pre and post COVID. Um, and so uh, I would like to just, you know, walk you through uh, the report and then talk about um, the next steps, which is uh, implementation. So I've been speaking to department heads um, about their sort of um, their areas of concentration. So 
know, I've spoken to human resources, the planning director, the building commissioner, the DPW superintendent, um, for example, and talking about, you know, the findings for areas that they're, you know, responsible for. And I've also speaking, spoken with our finance director about um, having ADA improvements be part of the capital budget. And uh, he said, sure, that sounds great. So um, I've been um, working to have that officially added to the capital budget um, on a rotating, on a continuous basis. Um, and so um, I've spoken to the town manager as well about this whole process and about, you know, making sure that the ADA improvements are part of, you know, all town projects for renovations or new construction and that all grants um, you know, that we're seeking should incorporate uh, you know, ADA improvements for renovations or, you know, or of course, making sure if it's new construction that it is ADA compliant. So there's been a wealth of grants coming through uh, the town of Amherst uh, because of COVID. There's been a lot of COVID relief grant opportunities and uh, we've, uh, this ADA transition plan uh, has has in a lot of ways been perfectly timed for 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 all these grant opportunities. So planning staff uh, and I have been referencing the transition plan for every grant that we're applying for for our town facilities. Um, so it's been already uh, been helpful for grants that we've either already applied for in the last six months or um, are applying for right now, and and um, it will be a definite it's definitely a living document that we are referencing. Um, so yeah, so I, I hope to give a, a presentation at the next meeting if, if uh, this committee is interested. Comments? I'm interested, this is Tori, to hear a presentation about it. Um, I think we're all interested. I would like to know uh, a couple of things. What might the role be for this committee? First of all, back up. Thank you, thank you, thank you for including accessibility into the capital plan, not as an afterthought into whatever project they're proposing but as its own specific item that they're gonna to have to, this year we're going to make X, Y, or Z accessible that we already have that isn't accessible. Um, or this year we're going to make sure that, you know, uh, accessibility, I think the way you phrased it is gonna be at the forefront of any of, of, of things that are proposed to be done. My reading of the line item is that it's sort of, belongs to this report as retrofit accessibility that has its own line item. Am I reading that right? Whether they, the capital budget item would be for renovations or for new construction, is that your question? Yeah, I mean, it seems to me uh, like- that's a good question. Um, I, I don't think that's really been defined um, of would it, would it be limited to renovations or could it be for for new new construction? Could it be for new uh, like a new conservation trail um, that that we would want it to be ADA accessible? Uh, so I, uh, uh, that's just like one example that jumps out in my mind. Um, or it could be for listening devices. Uh, I I don't know if what it. I don't think the town has thought that through yet, to be honest, but what are your thoughts of would you want, if there was a line item for ADA improvements, would you want it to limit it to certain projects or would it be sort of open-ended of, you know, whether it's renovations or, or software or, or new construction? Um, what are your thoughts? Comments? 
I I would not want to limit it um, with a list and unless we give a list and then say, but not limited to this list, something I, you know, because something might come up that we're not thinking of that needs to be done in the future. I would not want to limit the list. Anybody else? Um, Maureen, do you have any idea how much money you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. And the reason I ask is um, I was on the architectural access board for the university for about 30 years, and I did the first transition plan. And we got the university to commit $400,000 a year in a line item that we used. We would, it could be rolled over every year so we could amass a some money to be able to to do a major project but we always held money aside for immediate things when somebody you know if you needed if you had an employee you needed software if you needed something for a constituent someone living in town in order for them to to make it accessible um, you had that money that you could do something with either purchasing something or doing it with in-house staff um, just for immediate needs. Um, we all know of some projects that took way too long, um, in, both in town and at the university. For, but those kinds of monies are helpful in solving immediate problems. Sure. Just a great thought. Great idea. No, great idea that, um, I mean, I was, a hundred years ago, I was on the Joint Capital Planning Committee for about five years, and uh, there was never an amount of money that anybody knew was going to be forthcoming. So we we didn't have that kind of budget. I don't think the town has anywhere near yeah. the university kind of budget. But even if it were a certain amount that we knew would be allocated each year that could be held over or or used. I think that's a great idea. So that's the next step from what you talk to them about, Maureen, which is, OK, you're going to put a line item for uh, ADA compliance or accessibility issues or whatever we want to call it. And there's a certain amount of money that's going to be budgeted there. They always hold things over and every line item. You know, not everything gets spent every year. Sure. So um, yeah, I, I love that idea. Because then we, after we could say in three years, we're going to have enough money or we're going to plan to have enough money to be able to do X. Or this year, we're going to be able to do Y because we need to do it now. I love that idea. You know, it's, so if, you know, if you need a, a door opener somewhere, you know, that's a $10,000 item. But, you know, if you had a budget every year of, say, $20,000, you know, if somebody came forward and said, we need a door opener on this door because someone's using it all the time and, and they need to get in, you would have that kind of funds to get somebody in to, to do that relatively rapidly. You know, some of the things just hang around for so long and they're really small things. Mm -hmm. That is really okay. I, I, um, this is really good, um, feedback. I, I'll definitely make a note of this, um, and uh, look into, I'll ask that, um, question um, of town staff and, and look into what is the specific process for getting this onto the capital budget. Um, I do know, I'm trying to look for my notes here. Is Pat still there? He is. is Aha. Uh -huh. What do you think, Pat? How do we do it? I don't know how to do it, but <laughs> I like the idea. What I think I will do is um, if is talk to Paul, if if Maureen, if you could send me the the portion of the minutes that say exactly how this fund works or Marty, if I could be in touch with you. Oh, you can call me anytime. OK, can I have your number? Um, my number is 413. Five seven five, five seven, ten twenty, ten twenty. 
then I, c I can talk to you a little bit more and get clarity about it. And sure. then to the town manager, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I'll be happy to do that. Yeah. Because my understanding is that the town council ultimately puts together the budget, right? The town manager ultimately puts together the budget. Okay. The only but you thing have to approve it. What the council can do is approve or disapprove uh, a line item. We can't add money, we can reduce, a, reduce something. But I, this feels really important. Um, so I'd like to get clarity and that so I can talk to him with some kind of intelligence. Um, so is that okay. okay, Myra? So essentially he'll give you an amount. You're not allowed to increase? Right, in other words, okay. if it were to budget um, $25,000 to buy light bulbs, I'm making this up, believe me. Yeah. Uh, we could say, oh no, we want 30,000. We can't do that according to the new charter. We could reduce it to 20,000 or 15,000, but we have no real budgetary power other than a overall approval and not approving doesn't do anything really. It's a, a flaw I think in the charter, but, but so there getting all getting some, you know, this, proposed uh, to Paul and to the JCPs, the Joint Capital Planning Project would be good. We can get Kathy Shane in on that. She's the chair of that committee as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that would be great. And, and perhaps uh, Pat, you could uh, um, either email everyone an update um, if, if, if you get this information on, you know, sooner um, or um, uh, uh, yeah, I would suggest uh, sending everyone an email of, of whatever update you can get us and then um, you can give us an uh, oral update at the next meeting. Sounds good. Cool. Okay. Yeah, good Yay. idea. No, it's very good. Um, and then I, I did have one other item to talk to you uh, about, okay. um, which is another grant. Um, so as I said, uh, I, 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 me and other planning staff have referenced the, a, the uh, ADA plan uh, um, several times um, as part of our app, uh, grant application. So uh, the latest one, uh, which is uh, developing right now, is that uh, the planning department is collaborating with the senior service, uh, the senior serve, uh, senior center, uh, about a uh, mass DOT COVID relief grant. It's called um, the Shared Streets Grant. Um, we this is the second phase i believe that we're applying for the grant we received a grant through this program in the summer uh to uh to down. nine minutes ago five notifications sorry that's not my oh, oh okay. maybe it is okay. maybe it is sorry it was just my phone sorry oh that's fine um it's even turned off it just does that that's fine uh so uh the, the DOT grant, we uh, received a grant in early fall for um, promoting outdoor dining outside. Um, you'll see uh, there was um, light fixtures added and, and, and tables and umbrellas and, and things of that nature. That was um, the first round of the DOT grant. So this round, um, they uh, are are taking grant proposals from communities. And um, this time we are working with our senior center um, and we would like to um, provide a, uh, as part of the application, a accessible route uh, to the uh, health center uh, at the bank center. Um, there's, if you're familiar with the bank center, there is a very, um, your case that leads you down to the Musanti Health Center. Um, the staircase is in bad repair and um, someone in a wheelchair um, can't access it because it's stairs. So let me pull up my- Wait, where are you talking about? Um, it's at the Bang Center. Um, so inside- the front door and you go to the stairs toward the right by the- No, well, okay. So there's many door entrances to the Bang Center. It is, 
let's see if you are familiar with so i guess if you were at the southerly side of the bank okay. center um there is a door there i'm actually not talking about that door okay but there's a staircase there the staircase brings you down to the back side of the bang center and those and at that door entrance on the back side that leads you to the busanti health center exterior staircase you're talking about outside exterior, interior. Yes. and Wait, um, say that again it you disappeared exterior or interior exterior Huh. okay i didn't even know about it all right um let me pull so unfortunately uh Mara and perhaps elise won't be able to see it um but let, i can pull up google maps to show so i'm familiar with it because i live like practically a stepping stone away from it oh of course yeah so um give me one second um, somebody else said they didn't know it was there either <laughs> well so you think of it it is there yeah the, the staircase is 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 not in the best repair. It's it, there's a lot of steps that are crumbling, um, and uh, there's a much better way. Uh, and um, and it also the staircase leads you to the entrance door to the health center, but it also leads you to the Clark House. Um, and so there just isn't a good connection between these facilities. So I'm going to try to share my screen. Uh, does everyone? For those that can see, can you see the Google map? Yeah. Yes. So this is the bank center right here. And um, so there is a door entrance here that leads into the bank center. I'm actually not talking about this door entrance. Now, unfortunately, the trees are blocking the view. But if you follow my mouse, I'll try to take you on this ride here. So there's a staircase that leads you down here. It's pretty uh, uh, steep staircase. And uh, it brings you down here, and then the door to the health center is on the back side here. Um, and so this stair the staircase leads you there. It also leads to this existing walkway that then connects to the Clark House, and and then maybe uh, arguably um, I forget what 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 the name of this uh, housing center is on Kellogg and Whalen. Um, Oh, Ann Willen. So I, I think there's even a walkway that leads leads uh, leads along here. So and then and then it connects you back to the um, Sweetser Park. So um, let me pull up. So I if you're not if you can't do a staircase, how do you get from the front of the building to the back? I mean, is there a big big steep? That is a very good question. Um, I believe there is on the. Front side of the bank center, there's a walkway here that walks that leads you along the building, and I believe it will bring you around the building. Um, now, if you are coming from the southerly side, if you're coming from like the town common, and you are trying to get to the health center, you would have to go all the way around the building, like this, like this, like this. Or um, so this would provide a much uh, safer and um, and time efficient way to get to the health center from the south part of town. So if you're coming again from like the town common um, area or from the town hall, this would be the fastest way to get to the backside of the bank center. Where There's no parking there, right? There is parking that's located outside of the bank center. Um, in the front. There is, yep. Uh, but not in the back. Maureen, isn't there a stair, uh, staircase and interior staircase and elevator access that gets you down to the floor where the yes. house is? And then it's yeah. just a little yes. trip on the hall. If you yeah, go think, down to the I lower think she level. I might be talking about that, that that facility could be used when the building isn't open. Gotcha. Thank you. I, if, if you go into the front entrance of the banks and you take the elevator down to the lowest level yeah. and then you walk as if you're going into the large room at the end of the hallway. Yes. Immediately before that, you take a left and I think there's a sign there that, that yep. says health center. And yep. then you, you go uh, to the left and then you go to the right and, and I think you get down that way as well. But yeah, whoever just said this, um, it's a good point. 
the health center may be open at times at the bang center. So the, the bangs is the overall building. Gotcha. Right. Those doors may not be unlocked. Um, and so it would be uh, good for um, a, 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 uh, another route for people to access the health center. So let me uh, pull up this. Um, hold on a second. So this, um, I'm sharing with you a, a, a plan. This is the existing conditions. So here's the entrance uh, to the bang center. Um, this is the parking lot down here is where Johnny's tavern is. And these are the stairs that lead you down, the existing stairs that lead you down to the John McDonough Health Center. Those stairs are in very poor condition. Um, and, um, and of course they're not accessible for someone in a wheelchair. So the proposed plan is that this is the, um, again, back at the uh, uh, self entrance door here, the existing door, this is the existing parking lot. They would be adding a ramp that would go down. Um, there would be a landing midway uh, and then it would lead you down to a, um, a sitting area. There would be four benches and then uh, it would then continue down through this ramp, there would be a landing located here, and then it would terminate to the existing walkway. And you could either, you know, head east to the Clark House, or you could go to the John Musanti Health Center entrance door. And then here is a, a more detailed um, plan. This shows you the 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 dimensions, it, it would be a five foot wide ramp. Um, it and um, it shows you the length of the ramp. It shows you the slope and um, it shows a little uh, more fine tuned um, uh, spec uh, specifications of, of the plan. And so, um, so we are applying for this grant it is due on January 29th. Um, doesn't mean that we hope to get it, but it's not a definite. But this is something that the senior center um, has uh, vocalized a real desire for this to be um, corrected. Um, and so the planning department is working with the senior center um, to um, submit a grant to, that would address this. It also, um, let me share with you one other thing. Um, the grant will also um, get into, I guess a lot of seniors uh, have an informal walking route and uh, for exercise and it, it goes around. Uh, I'm not too specific on this information just as yet, uh, but I guess there is a walking path that goes around the Bang Center and the Clark House and Ann Wayland. And as part of this grant application, we might uh, try to see if we can sort of um, formalize this walking route um, with maybe um, fun pavers or, or little markings on the sidewalk. So folks, and, and perhaps signage, so folks know where this walking path um, would go. Um, just as a way to promote it. Um, I'm not sure of the length of it. I don't know if it's a mile or less, but um, perhaps the signage can be those sort of specifics. And then the grant would also get into, um, let's see, I'm gonna go to street view, so bear with me for one second. Um, this is uh, this crosswalk right here um, that connects, um, the bank center. Uh, I believe there's a cafeteria in here. I'm not exactly too sure, but there is an entrance here and this crosswalk is in bad repair. And um, we've been told that you can really tell if I were to turn this around, I'll try to do that. Um, this is a blind spot. So when someone um, is walking or in a wheelchair and they're trying to cross this crosswalk right here. Um, it um, There is a line of sight issue um, and people feel uncomfortable that they might get hit from a car while crossing the street 
even though there is a stop sign. So uh, we're looking into uh, what sort of, uh, if this could be redesigned um, maybe with bollards um, to sort of protect someone that's about to enter or cross the cross this little this road here. So the grant would include that as well. And so the planning department was uh, wanted, we wanted to inform you guys of this grant proposal and see if you uh, wanted to share any comments uh, or recommendations. With it. Anybody have any comments? I would like to. It's a great idea. It is a wonderful idea, but <clears throat> but I'm just asking that they not use brick. Um, oh yeah. To to create the the ramps, it looks pretty, but it's not <clears throat> it's not pretty for someone who uses a wheelchair or a scooter or even walking crutches with a cane or crutches. Um, they fall apart. Uh, it just becomes dangerous. And I know that crosswalk that you were just pointing at um, by the Bang Center, that is brick right now. So if they would please consider using a different material for the crosswalk and, and the ramps. I don't know what, it said concrete on, on your map or your drawing there, but I don't, I just want to make sure that they don't cover it with brick because it's not a good idea. Good for, point. For yeah. accessibility reasons. <clears throat> good point. It's not a good idea for a lot of reasons because the asphalt and the brick expand and contract at different um, rates and they're after a couple of years, they're never even. Right. They look nice. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Only for the first couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Tori and Marty. That's really good information. And I, I definitely will pass that info along. And, you know, and I think we all can. Uh, Unfortunately, we can see the results of brick after a few years. Um, just Actually, there is a way to do it and not have that happen, but it's much more expensive. It's just been done at the university. It involves <coughs> pouring a, it, no, if you wanna have brick, you have to pour a concrete walk with curb and then set the brick in there. It's the only way they'll last. And they still spall out after a while. But I think your your plan's really good. I think that's a great way to solve that slope problem mm -hmm. of getting down to the Musante Center. I think that would be a great asset to the town. Yep. Are they going to take the staircase really out? Nice. Is the staircase coming out as part of it and it's only going to be ramp? Or is the it, staircase going to be repaired as well? That's a good question. Um, the staircase will be repaired. I just want to make sure um, I understand the problem with the brick. I just want to make sure that there that it's just not a broad open space. That if it's that um, for blind people, big open spaces are terrible. So there has to be some kind of a, a boundary to the space. It could be a curb. It could be a different different kind of paving on the side. It could be grass. It could be anything. As long as it's just not a big open plaza. That you can't figure out where you're going and i obviously can't see the picture and didn't have it in advance so i don't know but it can't just be a big open place it has to be a demarcated work walkway that's a good point myrna you might want to put the railing on the inside all across the little plaza so that so that someone who's blind could follow the rail to the other leg of the ramp it could either be a rail or it could be something just in the pavement or it could be a grass or it could be a curb or it could be, I don't, you know, I don't. Well, obviously there's grass I, there. There's grass. Well, you know, it can always follow grass. Okay. Grass, you know, a boundary, anything that's a boundary instead of just a big 
open space. The worst thing for blind people is like parking lots or Ugh. you know any kind of big open spaces that you don't know where you're going. So as long as there's a clear boundary that you can follow on the walkway, you're fine. And you'll have Something that. tactile, yeah. Yeah. That's really good information. Um, all right, uh, is there a, anything else? I have a question. When we were interviewing Marty, I think, maybe the other candidate, uh, Paul Bockelman said that there might be a consideration of a roundabout at uh, Pomeroy Lane and 116. And I think we need to talk about that before they do it because I absolutely oppose anything like that. It is so dangerous. That is a school crossing. Um, to put a roundabout there instead of a stoplight is uh, is such a bad idea and he was thinking about doing it. So um, I we have to have a discussion about that and I'd like to know when that might be coming up because I think it's a real serious issue. No, that, that that's really good information. Um, and I, I have passed that information along to the planning director uh, about uh, your concerns about having a roundabout specifically um, persons with uh, with a visual impairment um, are um, and that are uh, have difficulty um, maneuvering a roundabout um, walking around it and uh, well there's you know, no light I mean you know it's like you know it's like bumper cars you know you, cars go through and you have to get across sometime when there's no car there's no line and it's a school crossing the kids who come from Orchard Valley have to cross the street there there's a light and they to grow to crocker farm and and um it can't be a roundabout i mean there really has to be very serious discussion i don't know where that is but paul bockelman mentioned it right. um and and we have to really talk about that sure because they already did it in town and it was a bad idea there and it's going to be a bad idea at pomeroy lane sometimes a stoplight just has to be there Myra, is there, I will check in with Paul about where they are with that, but if this committee could send a letter or an email to him now um, saying this, if you all agree, and I think it could be pretty critical. Um, I will get an update about when it's coming on the agenda again and what where it is and get back okay. to you. Oh, wow, okay. Myra. Yeah. That was with my interview. It was yours, okay. Yes, and I'm still trying to get the answers to whether the uh, highway regulations allow us to uh, put in walk lights. Oh, because right. at every roundabout, there's a, at where every street comes into the roundabout, you could put a walk light at each of those that would okay. stop the traffic so you could get across. If it can be done with a light, that's a safe light. I'm okay with it. Um, the one that's in town doesn't have a light. No, I know. Um, that's what, it, but I was, you know, there's, we have crossing lights in a lot of other areas. And if we could have pedestrian crossing lights at the four intersections of a roundabout, that would solve, uh, hopefully would solve your issues with the um, visibility. Well, it's also a school crossing. There's little well, kids. yes, it would also help with the school crossing. Yeah, I mean, there's little kids. There are six-year-olds that have to yeah. walk to school. No, I agree with you. I think it, I think that may be our best solution, and okay. you know, it might be something that the town actually takes up as part of the planning Great. that all future roundabouts have walk lights, and maybe this committee <clears throat> works on getting the funds to to put lights at the one in, in the center of town. I, okay. I believe that came up in one of our meetings a long time ago before the roundabout at Triangle Street was created. And they said something about not having the space to do what we were asking them to do. We wanted more light there and we wanted some safety, um, what you're talking about. They've got plenty of room to do that. That's, that's not a... 
I don't know what they were talking about because there is I don't plenty either, but I remember having um pushback when we when we had this discussion. And I kind of remember Tori that that would slow down the traffic. Something, yeah. I believe well, I, that was part of it. But they should slow down, especially right. that's the whole point. <laughs> Right. Especially on a school crossing. Um, depends on who looks at it. They just want some they people want do the not traffic really flowing. So, yeah. so Marty, um, with your suggestion, so um are you suggesting like a push button? Someone yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah, just to, so that you know if, if you don't need it, you don't have to use it. Do you know of any? They have to be audible signals. I mean, yeah. you have to be able to find them. Oh, sure. You know, like, yeah. I was just going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely audible. I don't know where any are located, but that's what I've been trying to get hold of is the person I know who knows all the, the federal highway regs. Aha. Uh -huh. That would be fabulous. This is a state road, I believe, 116, right? It's yeah. Not so it's got, it's got to meet all of the. Federal right. highway regs. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So you want us to write a letter, Pat? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I guess anybody want to write it or am I volunteering to write it? That's sort of <laughs> dumb because I just volunteered to write it. <laughs> you want to write it, Marty? <laughs> Marty, why don't you write it? <laughs> you and Myra write it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I will. I will give it a shot, okay. and I will send it around. Um, I will send it around uh, to see what people think. Pat, how urgent is the timing? I. That's what I have to find out, so I can let you know. The other thing is, if you folks could include me on let you know things like this letter or other letters, that that would be helpful. Okay, we should just add you to the yeah, to the group list. Mail. Maureen sends out everything that comes from the committee. Yes, she um, So like we just send stuff to Maureen and then she disperses it because of open meeting stuff. We don't want to get into the yeah. speaking to each other. Although- Well, I do want to say something about open meeting. One of the things, because periodically on the council, um, we'll have something that, we're going to need to talk about, but we can't talk about, but Lynn needs some information from each counselor. So we do a do not reply all. You only right. send it to the person who sent you the email. So uh, in this instance, the council only replies to Lynn. So we're not, so there are ways to connect. Right, that's what we person. do. We're supposed to rep reply to Maureen anytime she sends something out, not reply all. Gotcha. And then- yeah, so Maureen knows what everybody says, but we don't know what each other says. Great. Um, and I'll be quiet. I said I was going to be quiet. <laughs> no, no, no. You okay, don't. Please you don't be quiet. All right. So uh, we need a letter, I guess, that I'll write uh, the, expressing our interest in making sure that the intersection of Pomeroy Lane and West Pomeroy Lane and 116 is uh, completely accessible uh, to people who use wheelchairs and who are visually impaired and who need a light, right? Because yes, yes. not having a light imperils everyone because of the speed of the traffic. Including the school children. Yes. Yeah. I mentioned the school children. As yeah, that's well. true. Then it makes it much bigger. Yeah. Um, you know, they'll say, well, we have a crossing guard, but you know, some kids go before the crossing guard and some people go after the crossing guard. So yeah, it has to be, it has to be a controlled intersection, whether it's on a roundabout or not, it has to be controlled from all four corners. Is that how you say it, Marty? Yes. Okay. From all, all entrances into the into the from all entrances into the roundabout okay okay all right uh i don't even know what time it is is it one it's one o'clock one o'clock it's one uh maureen can we put off one more time those minutes sure not a problem okay. um, before all we right. go um if you guys wouldn't mind could uh could you guys make a motion about the shared streets grant um just because oh, yeah. i 
I need Does to... anybody want to make a motion uh, that we support the shared street street <laughs> shared street <laughs> grant with the changes in the paving surfaces that we recommended, and with uh, making sure that there are um, you know that there are uh, tactile boundaries for people who who are blind. <laughs> I'll make a motion. Okay, so uh, we we didn't write anything up. I mean, we, we need to be, uh, but uh, Tori had the suggestion about making sure that the paving, um, I don't even know how you say that, was a it, suitable surface for people with wheelchairs. What do you say? Smooth, maybe? Oh, there you go. Or we can just put it right out there. Do not use brick. <laughs> What's the language that they, that you would use, Marty? What do they? What's the architect language? Uh, I think smooth is probably a good word because if you say that it meets code, the problem is 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 even pea gravel meets code, right? Which mm -hmm. is not a good, it's no. not a good surface to roll over. So I would say a smooth. Yeah. Smooth, uninterrupted would be what we would say. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Uninterrupted, right. smooth surface with clear tactile boundaries. Yes. Excellent. How's that? Sounds good. Great. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, who made the motion? I Every did, Tori. Tori. Okay. So Tori is moving that we approve the recommendation for the DOT grant with the, um, with the uh, deviation from the presented plan that the that the that the surface be smooth, uninterrupted, smooth with tactile boundaries. You can write it up any way you want, Maureen, but that's <laughs> essentially it. Is there a second? Yeah, I I'll can't second. Think I don't know who that was, but <laughs> whoever Maureen it was says. multiple. Multiple. Okay. Um, okay, let's do a roll call for approval. Maureen, you want to call them or people you uh, Myra? Yes. Uh, Elise? Yes. Ruth? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Marty? Yes. Tori? Yes. Okay. Great. Sarah so positive with uh, making uh, with the, the uh, services. Wait, you're you're disappearing. We don't hear you. Sorry. Yeah, I, I think I'm having bad internet today. Um, so uh, I'll make a positive recommendation for this grant proposal. Uh, the uh, surfaces are smooth and uninterrupted, by tactile boundaries for all paved surfaces. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's what we voted for. That's cool. And. Um, you're going to let us know about the AAB and I'm going to write a letter to the town about Pomeroy Lane and uh, this was a good meeting. It was. We got a lot done. <clears throat> okay, um, the motion to an adjourn from somebody. So moved. Um, okay. uh, I think, I think that right. was Ruth. Ruth and then Tori. So sorry, I guess we technically do need to do this roll call. Myra? Yes. Elise? Yes. Ruth? Ruth? Yes. Darren? Yes. Marty? Yes. Tori? Yes. All right, we're adjourned. So we'll see okay. you back on oh, the next meeting, I think, is February 9th. Is 9th. that right? Yes. February okay. 9th. Okay, so it's only three weeks. We might have some more business to get involved with then, depending on Maureen's conversation with the state. All righty. All right, have All a right. great uh, rest of your day. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.